vlog number 101. I'm Joshua Kimball and this is the vlog where I talk about quarterly stories which is my graphic novel that I hand write, hand letter, and hand ink and then hand to you hopefully someday in print but until that day it's available serialized all the way up to page 50 for your reading enjoyment at quarterlystories.com. Page 50 just went up yesterday and I encourage you guys to check it out. This is the vlog where I document the process and the progress of creating that graphic novel on top of being a full-time art director, a full-time father, and a full-time husband. It's a very personal story to me about faith and mental illness. I haven't vlogged in a couple weeks and I really wanted to update because my goal is to continue doing these vlogs and update at least once a week and I fell short of that goal the last two weeks. I was trying an experiment using Instagram for shorter updates so that I could hopefully have a larger chunk on a vlog. Um, and so what I was doing was like posting on Instagram speed process uh, videos um, of each panel separately because I generally do about a panel a day of artwork on my comic. But what I'm starting to realize is that that might actually put a spoke in the wheel on my YouTube channel. And I don't want a spoke in the wheel, I actually want to keep momentum on this thing. So I think that I will probably go back to regularly updating on YouTube. I'm still going to be using Instagram, I'll still occasionally post process videos, but anyhow, so that was an experiment. What should be interesting though is I do have the entirety of page 50 um, being inked, uh, you know, in a time lapse, hopefully playing down here. A few things to, to say. One, I need to announce uh, the subscriber who um, won a free copy of my comic book, Numb. And that subscriber is Jan, Janimal. And uh, so Jan, um, email me at joshkemble at gmail.com where you want me to ship your free comic. And uh, that'll get to you shortly. Hang on, getting on the freeway. I got a really cool gift from Scott Campbell, the window painter. And uh, it's, um, it's pretty rad. It's like a sculpture from his art cars. He has two YouTube channels. Uh, one is um, Scott Campbell, the window painter, and it's an excellent channel. And then the other is Dark Ride, which is also an excellent channel where he gets into like sculpting and making um, three-dimensional artwork for his art cars. And they're kind of a trip. They're really interesting and definitely worth checking out. He also sometimes will show like um, stop motion animation and all sorts of like fascinating stuff that this guy's worked on and he uh, sent me a little piece of his art car and it's amazing it's really cool I think I'm gonna try to mount it on um, a wood plaque or something like that just so that I can hang it on the wall um, of my house but it, it looks really cool I'll show you guys um, in a little bit so there's that so that's cool Number two, yesterday I was invited to check out the Los Angeles Society of Cartoonists and it was it was a cool thing. It was an interesting thing to kind of check out firsthand and, um, and I think that I'm actually kind of interested so I might become a member of it. It was really cool. I met a lot of artists that I really dig um, and aside from that it just seems like an encouraging kind of like uh, interesting little tight-knit uh, cartoonist community and I was invited by a friend from this, uh, those meetups that I do once a month that you can check out at, on, on my last blog about Cantor's, um, our artist meetup, and it, it was just one of those cases of like my gut told me to just say no but my gut was telling me to say no because A, it's uncomfortable to, to meet new people. Number two, it's a bit of a drive from here to Los Angeles. And number three, did I really want to commit to something else that might distract from me making my comic? And at the end of the day, all of those things sounded like excuses to avoid saying yes to something that could possibly be good. And I'm trying to work on that. Um, 
trying to work on actually being better at saying yes. It's funny because a lot of my life, I needed to get better at saying no, saying no to jobs that I didn't want, especially as an artist, um, saying no to things that are distractions. But um, as I've gotten older, I've, I, I really uh, have realized that I need to work on getting better at saying yes at, to things that could potentially be beneficial or fun. And um, so, yeah, so that was a really cool experience and that happened yesterday. I've also worked on thumbnails for the next page, for page 51. So while I've been gone from YouTube, I have been consistently carving away at my comic. So I'm heading to work right now. Hopefully I, I, I am playing you at some point on this video, the, uh, the process videos um, of me inking all of page 50. And so today, when I get home, we have a gopher in our front yard. I, I kid you not, like a gopher in California in our front yard. And uh, we've tried like all sorts of methods to get rid of him, and he just doesn't seem to want to leave our yard. So um, today is kind of a last ditch effort at that. So that's my, the first thing I'm gonna do when I get home from work. We're also in rush season at my job. And so, uh, you know, getting through the work day on its own is gonna be a really awesome kind of challenge. After that, I'm, I'm really hoping um, to get at least the start of photo reference for this page. This page is gonna have a lot more panels than I usually have on my pages. And um, part of that's because I wanted to work as almost like a montage, but in an interesting way. I got the idea for that from looking at um, someone who goes to those art of, artist meetups. Uh, Dave Baker is working on this monumental um, graphic novel called The Action Hospital. And he did this interesting layout where he had a bunch of panels kind of overlapping and underlapping each other, and I haven't really seen that done that often. Um, and so I thought that was really a cool idea, and I've been kind of looking for an opportunity to be able to kind of take that um, panel layout kind of thinking and apply it to my own work. And it just kind of worked out because just when I was thinking about that, I was at the thumbnail stage, page 51, and it has a mention of, um, of a long night that is being wrapped up into a small sentence. And so that kind of works out for a montage, and so I'm gonna try my hand at doing this kind of crazy, ambitious montage. But that means that the photo reference is gonna take a little bit longer because it's way more panels. Um, it also means that the um, initial, initial layout stage is probably going to take a little bit longer because it's a lot more panels. So, um, but you know, you got to keep things interesting, at least I think, when you're making these things, um, partially to kind of continually push the limits of what you can do as an artist, um, to also push your vocabulary in the comics medium. And then I think at the end, it's also really important just to keep yourself sane while you're working on these things. So I'm pretty excited to get to page 50. Um, and the cool thing about that is I'm, I'm at a little bit over the halfway point for getting this out as a graphic novel. So some interesting things have kind of corresponded with that. One is, it, and I'm just being honest, there was a part of me that started feeling slightly discouraged about the prospect of putting this thing out. And I don't know why that is. Um, I think it's because in the past, when I've tried to kind of get comic books out in the comic book industry, it's met with mixed results. Um, like, my first attempt at it was really successful, fairly successful and um, I got a book out there. My second attempt was a graphic novel that I was doing for a publisher who then dropped the book, and uh, that graphic novel has never seen the light of day, and I've already explained my reasoning, but I really kind of don't want it to see the light of day, because at the end of the day, 
regardless of how it's put out, I'm going to have to promote, I'm going to have to go to conventions, I'm going to have to try to do signings and uh, interviews and all sorts of stuff to try to get that thing uh, the best chance of selling that it can have. And honestly, that particular book, I don't feel that passionate about um, to go through that rigmarole of just trying to get it out there. So this book, however, um, is a little different because A, it's black and white, which means that it is more possible that I might be able to create this thing in black and white as a graphic novel. Number two, that I've put out work for publishers before as an illustrator. I've illustrated books before. Not a lot, but I've illustrated a few. And generally what I learned from that experience is that regardless of whether you have a publisher or not, you have to hustle, you have to sell your book, you have to be out there trying to give it the best shot um, at succeeding. And unless you're kind of the book that the publisher decided they were going to target all their guns on promoting, um, it's really hard to get to the point where your book uh, really is going to make a lot of money on royalties or anything like that. And actually, honestly, it, you know, a lot of the time you're going to be pretty fortunate to get a second printing if it goes out of print. Uh, because comics are kind of a weird little niche thing. Now, this doesn't mean that comics don't sell. It doesn't mean that people don't make a living doing comics. Um, there's a lot of cartoonists who sell comics very effectively. I'm just saying my own personal experience has been that for what I do, it, it requires a bit of a hustle because you're trying to find a more niche audience. So anyhow, that being said, uh, yesterday I went to this awesome cartoonist thing and then I got home and I actually had a point of just feeling really discouraged and um, starting to think about the realities of like this thing that I'm putting years of work into, uh, you know, when it gets to print time. Um, for one thing, I, you know, there's that doubt that anyone else other than myself will be into it, you know, and so there's that second guessing. Um, there's also the second guessing that happens when it comes to like, well, okay, so if I order this, like, and start conventioning, because it's been a while since I've done conventions, and I usually know how that works, and honestly, conventioning uh, as an experience hasn't been that bad for me, because I have kind of figured it out a little bit, but things have changed a lot in the long amount of time since I've conventioned or done signings or anything like that, and people have changed. So, there was a part of me that was starting to feel discouraged because I was starting to feel like, A, I don't really know a ton of people in comics anymore um, for, like, promotion, for, like, I don't even know who to send copies to, to review. Um, I don't really know how to register for conventions again. It's been a long time. Um, I, I know that most of them have websites, but I know that the game has slightly shifted. I don't know what table costs are anymore. Um, these all sound like, like totally silly things, but yesterday I felt almost like debilitated by it. And it was interesting to me to kind of have all of these questions kind of come up. Like, um, like so if I self-publish it, uh, is there even a possibility of getting distribution for it? And if there's not distribution, what do I just sell locally? and really nobody gets to hear of it, and, um, and so on. This is like a chain of things that was just running through my mind when driving home from that cartoonist meetup. And, um, and uh, it, it dawned on me that like I've had these doubts before, um, and these doubts can be a little harder when you've tried before to kind of make it in the comics world or whatever, or you've tried to kind of put stuff out there and you've seen kind of how difficult it can be. Um, it can be a little discouraging. Um, but then I was remembering that like, yeah, these doubts are really nothing new. Like my first comic was rife and full of those doubts. Um, 
The second thing I realized was, unlike when I was younger, my doubts don't really have to do with the content. Like, I feel pretty confident in the story and the artwork. Now, that doesn't mean I don't see the flaws in my own artwork um, or some of the challenges that, you know, are going to come down the road with that. But in general, I'm pretty damn confident in what I'm creating. And so that is a nice change from like the younger me who used to like when I was working on comics, just, you know, start to doubt the whole thing altogether. Um, now it's just more of a matter of like, you know, it, it's, it's kind of scary. And this, this is going to tie into hopefully something positive at the end. So bear with me, but it's a little scary to be getting closer to go time. Um, on my comic because once I hit that kind of 96 page point um, that means that this thing that I've been working on and these little schemes that I've been trying to kind of execute in my head kind of my attack plan for releasing it um, has to actually get challenged as a reality and that's kind of a scary thing because there's risk involved and what we at least what most of us as creators don't like about risk or about that kind of thing is the fact that uh, you you really are vulnerable to kind of things not working out and and so it's a it's a point of vulnerability to allow yourself to take a risk um, and you know it's a little scary so it's funny because, like I said, I've been so confident um, throughout the majority of the process of making this book, and I have a pretty clear plan. Um, like, here's my thinking, and I'm just going to uh, kind of put it out there, but my thinking for my own work is, um, on my previous graphic novel, I did send it out to other publishers after the publisher who had kind of had me do it initially, um, you know, had me do the entire thing, and, uh, and then dropped me, <laughs> um, which was pretty, like, which kind of sucked, um, so, so yeah, so I sent it to a lot of other indie publishers, like, pretty much all of the indie publishers that I know, and I kept getting met with a response of, like, this is good, but it's more suited for and they'd point to a different publisher and then I'd go to that publisher and they'd be like this is good but it's more suited for that publisher um, and it would get kind of bounced around to different submission processes um, with a lot of people like this is really great but no um, and I even had a few publishers say this is a really strong peak strong work but it's just not what we publish um and which is weird because like I would look at those publishers content and I'd be like no this is kind of what you publish but what so what I started ascertaining from that and what I started observing at least was that and this is a long time ago in comics so I don't know where it's at now but it seemed like there was a trend of book publishers expecting you to kind of be able to bring a fan base um, to them. So you really, at least in comics it seems, um, sort of have to self-publish and hustle and be at conventions and kind of be building your own audience. And um, so my thinking on it kind of switched, where I was like, instead of pursuing publishers, because I had done that multiple times, and um, I, I just noticed that, it, at least for me, it wasn't working. And, um, and then I saw that, I noticed that a lot of people who have publishers in comics um, tend to have like just put out a lot of stuff and then the publishers just kind of approach them. Um, so that's kind of my thinking on it is like my goal I, I don't personally like love the idea of distributing my own book or of um, of the hassle of shipping. Like I, 
that's honestly a huge thing. Like, I, I really don't want to be shipping a lot of my own stuff. Um, but at the, at the end of the day, um, I also really um, want to get my books out to readers. And I've also seen just how this is kind of almost like a necessity in comics um, now. So what I'm thinking about doing with this comic is literally just publishing it myself, um, distributing it myself, and really trying to have a more one-on-one -on -one interaction with comic book shops in Southern California and then hopefully extend that to beyond. Um, and from that point, I also want to do conventions, um, where everything at the booth ties into this book, um, and most of what's for sale is just this book, um, because I'm not really aiming to become an illustrator, right? Like, I'm not really aiming to get hired for illustration, um, because I, I have a pretty steady job doing illustration and graphic design and art direction and I, and I actually like that job so I'm not really like keen to be like looking for a ton of other stuff I'll take stuff here and there um, but you know in general that's not really my aim my aim is literally like here's my book check it out um, and trying to build the brand of that book so that people will open it and read it because I'm confident that if people pick it up and read it, um, they're gonna like it. Because I've noticed that so far. Like even people who watch the YouTube channel wait a little bit before checking out quarterly stories, which makes perfect sense. I do the same thing if I'm watching videos. I rarely um, am good enough or interested enough to like instantly go, you know what, that sounds awesome. I'm gonna check it out this instant. I usually, it takes me a while and a lot of reminders and then eventually I'm like you know what I'm gonna check this out and then 80% of the time I'm like I should have checked this out earlier it's awesome so anyhow my point being um, that you know like a lot of you like the viewers or subscribers to this channel may not have read it yet and that's that's understandable but I'm confident that when people actually read it from like page one to page which what will eventually be page 96 that they're going to um, get something out of it um, and that they're gonna like it and I feel pretty confident in it but the difficulty is how do you convince somebody to, uh, to, to make that step of like you know purchasing a book and that's really intimidating and that gets into that scary stuff so anyhow my point being Yesterday, it was funny because I had a really like, kind of low point on my way home. Um, I was surrounded by these guys who are like these great cartoonists. They're, um, you know, most of them are published. Uh, a lot of them are working on published work. Uh, there were a couple kids book artists who won like Caldecott medals and stuff like that. And, um, uh, and I mean, I've had published books and stuff and, I, and I've done... Uh, published illustration, professional illustration for a long time, but I'm by no means like a successful, uh, super published uh, cartoonist, like to the level that a lot of these guys are, or you know, um, or a, a creator who's like got a brand or a Caldecott medal, or you know, like I'm just not that guy yet, I'd say yet, but my point being. So going there, it was like, on one hand, I kind of feel like I'm a peer with these people. And I know that like for quality of work, many of these guys are excellent. But I think for quality of work, at least when it comes to quarterly stories, I feel like my work holds up to what these people are doing. It's just a matter of that middleman, that distributor, that hesitation for somebody to pick up something new and check out something by someone they haven't heard of. And so, so yeah, so what's interesting is what dawned on me uh, today on my, on my drive to work is the fact that, um, I, you know, I, I shouldn't allow myself to have 
too many low points like that. I should allow myself to doubt a little bit because it makes me strategize and come up with better plans for making things and doing things. But I shouldn't, um, I shouldn't like strategize my way out or worry or get paranoid um, out of having that impetus or motivation to actually make art. And, um, and it, it just gets, it, it's hard to explain, but I guess what I'm saying is like, it kind of makes sense also. It's not totally irrational, I don't think, that it would be a little scary because I'm heading into a territory of vulnerability. On this YouTube channel, um, part of this is being vulnerable, just admitting that like, hey, you know what, like, I'm kind of halfway through my graphic novel and I, I'm a little concerned about whether people will read it or not or whether if I pay for a convention table I'm going to get the returns you know to be able to cover that like is this even something I'm going to be able to do but I want to respond to myself with all that negative thinking too and to you guys as well if you've ever experienced that because that's why I wanted to share this mainly is like I'm going through that and imagine a lot of creators go through that, especially when it's getting closer to go time. Um, it's like experiencing nerves before a concert or something like that. So here's the thing. What do I really want? And I mean, this is something that I've been thinking. Um, and what I really want is to have that book for myself. Like I want it printed and in my hands. Um, so that's one thing. Will my plan work for that? Yes. Um, number two, what do I really want? I want people to enjoy my work. Um, and what number of people have to enjoy my work for me to feel satisfied is a good question for me to ask myself. And I, and I think of that for you guys too. And I think most of us would love to have like a massive audience but then I, I was thinking about that and uh, the downside of having a massive audience and this doesn't mean like having a massive audience is a bad thing I would love a massive audience still but one of the downsides is like there might be a lot of people when you're well known um, who say they like your work or you know say that they've read your work and they've followed your work and they love it and haven't even read it. Um, maybe they even bought your book and they've never read it. Um, so I was thinking like, well, what do I want? And what I want is for hopefully people to read and enjoy the book and get something out of it. And will I get that from self-publishing it? Uh, yes. And it might be a small amount of people but at least it, it's getting out there. The alternative is to just sit on a book or just give up a project altogether. And to me, I don't really see an alternative. So I've gotten into this in my YouTube channel in the past, but, and I know I'm totally rambling. It's been a couple weeks, so I, I feel like I need to juice up the content a little bit on this particular vlog. Um, but anyhow, so what I, what, I, what I guess I'm getting at is um, I, I think I'm okay with taking a risk um, of doing this. And so I'm going to continue and I'm going to make the rest of this book and then I'm going to try to proceed with the plan. And if it doesn't work, I'll change strategies and keep working on different plans. But... The alternative is always a good thing to think about because that's where I suddenly realized like a lot of this stuff is just self-defeating. It's not helpful. Does that make sense? Like for instance, I'm worried about uh, conventions costing too much and maybe I don't make back table. So if the alternative to that is we'll just own convention, then what's the byproduct of that? Well, I never really find out. Um, and that's not really beneficial and my comic doesn't get out to anyone. So, um, maybe the other 
avenue is better. Like, risk it, try it, and if it doesn't work, cool. Didn't work. Move on. Right? Um, so what I'm saying is, like, one mode of thinking is positive and one mode of thinking is negative, and not a positive negative. I've gotten into this in past vlogs. I don't want to get too heavily into that. So, what would be the gain if I were like, well, I've had bad experiences getting comic books out there, um, and when I have gotten comic books out there, uh, you know, I've seen firsthand what seems like an industry where even getting out there as comics isn't really getting out there, because it's, it's low numbers of people. So, what would be the result of following that mode of thought? Stop making my comic? Well, that's great, but then I don't end up with a creative vision being brought to life and actually made into something. And I'm really into made things. I'm going to hopefully get more work done tonight, and I'm going to keep um, continually updating these vlogs. And I hope you guys are out there kind of overcoming the self-doubt and, um, and making stuff. Because honestly, like, the, the, the downside isn't that bad, um, as bad as the negative thoughts are going to tell you, I'd imagine, when you're like midway through these things. And the plus side uh, isn't going to always be excellent or like, you know, you may not end up like on a panel like winning an Eisner or something. But the point being, um, at least at, at the end of that, the more positive side you end up with something you made that you can be proud of. So, all right, I'm going to um, get going to work and I will talk to you guys later. Bye. Oh, and I'll see you guys next week.